First, we'll go into our room and introduce ourselves to our patient. We're going to inspect the head visually, look for any symmetry or patterns of hair growth and expression. Then we'll palpate the head, looking through the hair and looking for any lesions or lumps. Next, we'll palpate the temporal artery. Then we'll ask the patient to open and close their mouth while we're palpating and checking for TMJ. Next, we'll assess the neck for symmetry, position, range of motion. We'll palpate the lymph nodes, the preauricular and the postauricular, the occipital. Move down to the posterior cervical chain, anterior cervical nodes, submandibular, submental, and sublingual. Anterior cervical chain, and then we'll ask the patient to tilt their head forward and check for supraclavicular nodes. We'll do a shoulder shrug test on the patient to test for the cranial nerve. Then we'll palpate the trachea to make sure it's in midline using the landmarks of the thyroid cartilage, the ring of the cricoid cartilage, which is below the isthmus. Have the patient to swallow. The thyroid we can expect and palpate for size, shape, and symmetry. Next we'll palpate the carotid arteries on both sides. Then we'll use the bell end of our stethoscope, ask the patient to hold their breath, and auscultate. Next, we'll inspect the mouth. We're going to look at lips, mucosal membranes, gums, hard palate, soft palate, the floor of the mouth for color and surface characteristics. We can use a tongue depressor or either a gloved finger. We'll inspect the um, oropharynx, noting the uvula, tonsils, posterior pharynx, odor, and gag reflex. Then we'll ask the patient check their gums and ask them to bite. Next, we'll test airflow. Have the patient hold one side of their nose and then the other. Then we'll inspect the internal and external of the nose and the septum. We'll look at the ears, inspect and palpate the auricles surrounding tissues, cartilage, noting alignment and placement. We'll perform the otoscope exam, inspecting the canals, tympanic membranes for landmarks, deformities, and any inflammation. We'll note the tympanic membrane color, assess both, both ears. We'll assess a hearing test, a whisper test cover one ear and whisper and ask the patient to repeat it and then repeat that test on the other side. Then we'll do a Weber test which tests for bone conduction. Ask the patient if he hears a sound in one or more in one side more than the other. Then the Rhine test is testing for bone and air conduction. The air conduction should be approximately twice as long as um, the bone conduction. Next, we'll perform the ophthalmoscopic exam. We can begin by dialing in on our ophthalmoscope. You can dial into the short focal lens by dialing on a, something about three inches on your hand away from, from your lens and then pulling your hand up closer and dial in. Then we're going to examine the cornea and the iris. Using our other hand on the patient's forehead to make sure that we're not bumping into their forehead and crossing over. Then we'll dial in our ophthalmoscope for the infinite focal lens. By looking far away, we'll examine the retina and make sure to dim the light on the scope for this. This is checking for, um, both, all of these are checking for pupil response. Um, direct and consensual response. Then we'll palpate the eyes, inspect the orbits, um, and all the visual fields. We'll do H formation, and then we'll check for accommodation.